Poland is very exclusive, not exclusive, but uh, um, it's very, um, yeah, it is kind of exclusive, but it's very insulated. And so it doesn't uh, have foreigners come in to the country pretty much almost ever. I know we have, of course, the Winter Soldier came in, um, and, uh, you know, we've had one other person come in unwantedly. So we don't, there's a, con there's a concern and a caution about bringing in the gentleman who was on the gurney. And, uh, you know, there's, um, it, it does present a very, very rich complexity that he is there, and for various, for us in various ways. But definitely over the security of the nation, we do not want anyone to know that we have brought this man into the country, other than those who are present. So for uh, Wakabi to come in, who's the, uh, the leader in, uh, the leader of the border tribe who protect the borders of the nation, um, is a very massive conundrum for us to be in, which is why uh, the Black Panther uh, T'Challa has to go and uh, squash the, uh, the, the, the entry of this man into the space. Cause he certainly cannot see our uh, kind of unorthodox visitor. So is that your final scene? It's not my final scene in the movie. It's my final, you know, we don't shoot in sequence. Yeah. So it's, it's my final shot right. in, in the movie, right, yeah. which I've been shooting since. <laughs> No, January. So yeah, but no, it's not the fun. I kind of don't even believe it. You know, I mean, um, you know, I'm number three on the call sheet. Me, Chad, and and Lupita have been here since November first. I mean, we've been working flat out, and uh, I'm kind of like, really, you gonna let me go? Am I really gonna go? I'm really leaving? Because we've been working very, 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 very hard, and we're we're I I you know you don't even for to be away for two days was like not even possible really it was that intense so I kind of am like well I can go like just go <laughs> like, I kind of don't believe it yet I'm kind of still confused that I'm actually uh, done it's been a very all-encompassing project for me for a while what's the tone on set because uh, Ryan seems it seems like a, a really great director to work for he is he is he's awesome he's sweet he's uh, he's humble he's collaborative uh, he's uh, very, very kind. He's considerate, uh, and he's deeply creative. So it is—it's uh, been a, a joy to work with him. And you know, we're family. We're basically family now. So without your character doubt. belongs to the adored ones, like a bodyguard, army class type. Um, Not quite. My character is the leader of the Dormalage, yeah. who are not a bodyguard. My character is a general. She's the head of his armed forces. Yeah. So um, she does, her job is to, they are kind of betrothed to the throne. So they're kind of, they, they don't marry. They're, they are, uh, it is a very, very deep vocation. It's far beyond bodyguardship. And uh, they, uh, but she, she's actually, being the head of the Dormelage equates to being the head of his, not only his uh, military, uh, well, his, um, the armed forces of the nation, but also uh, his intelligence. So, you know, that, that's something that you'll see very quickly in the movie, that, uh, that she possesses that role. But she's also, uh, you know, she's considered the, uh, the next greatest fighter in the nation after him. And uh, they, you know, they go on, he take, when he goes on a mission, when he goes and handles things, as you know, you'll see, she's with him. You look in amazing set. Say that again? How's the bonding on the set? Oh, well, I mean, it's amazing. Uh, funnily, me and Lupita are already very bonded. Uh, she was in one of my plays, uh, Clips, last year. And we went through an astounding journey with that. I've known her since 2007. Um, she understudied that play when she was in school at Yale in 2009. So, I mean, we go way back. We're sisters. And being on this with her has been, um, it's really deepened that bond. Uh, we've uh, collaborated a lot. We've come together to, uh, you know, express concern, uh, ideas or contextualizations together, uh, with our, you know, our knowledge of the continent and and things like that uh, that we've contributed to the story. So we we really kind of work like uh, a team. Like he called, he he. I think I think Ryan once referred to her as my partner in crime. 
um, which we basically are. And Letitia, I adore. That's my little girl, because uh, she was also played the same role in Eclipse in London, uh, randomly, just randomly. And uh, so I spent some time with her back in 2015 when I went to see that production and work with them in the rehearsal room. And I always thought she was extremely special as I watched how she connected to this character I'd written um, by throwing on some, you know, some really serious, heavy uh, Kendrick Lamar music and getting into the zone. And I just sat and watched her. She didn't care who was watching it. I thought, this chick is fire. So I've always loved her. And so um, it's, it's been really beautiful. Like, we're a family, and it's a gorgeous did you, thing. Did you have a sense of responsibility within that family to that themes that you're putting out there with regard to women, with regard to Oh, hugely, yeah. <laughs> which I'm sure anyone who, anyone, uh, who will, uh, will let you know that, uh, who talks to you about uh, our participation, uh, myself and Lupita deeply, were deeply um, involved in that and very specific about how we uh, believed things should uh, be con contextualized and wanted. We contributed, and they, they let us. They let us contribute, and that I'm very thankful for. But yeah, we, I, we always have our eyes on that. We don't know how to. I'm a woman, I'm an African, and I tell African women stories anyway. I'm a playwright that writes that. So I, I have, I, there, I, there's no way, it's like I can't not be myself. So yeah, but the, the beauty is that they, they, they allowed us to, uh, to be collaborators. And that, I'm thankful for that to both Mr. Kugler and Marvel as a whole. They allowed us to collaborate. So are you a fan of Black Panther before you cast it here? And how do you describe Black Panther as a superhero? Uh, I didn't know a lot about Black Panther before I was cast. Um, I, I knew Chad from a while ago, uh, who some of his very close buddies went to Howard with him. And I, they, they also ended up at NYU Tisch grad acting with me. So we, we knew we were in the same circles, we knew each other, but, um, and I was very happy for him when I heard he'd gotten this role, but I, I didn't know the story. I don't, I don't heavily follow um, the world, quite honestly. But um, it, was, uh, it, was very, uh, it was very cool to learn about the world. And I found it, it's just an amazing, amazing uh, story to adapt. The idea to me that I found so thrilling you know, as an African, I'm American and I'm African. I was raised on the continent by African parents. And, uh, you know, one of my plays, I was researching it and it hit me really hard. Like the, the thing that we struggle with sometimes on the continent is we will never know who we could have fully been without being colonized. Um, the colonization process literally puts an entire, entire severance between the people and their ability to naturally evolve into their own specific modernity. Uh, and they become inundated and um, over, overcome by someone else's concept of modernity and of advancement and of um, civilization. So the thing that I love about Wakanda, the concept of Wakanda, to me it was very thrilling to be a part of a story where you get to tell the story of this African country that doesn't exist, but it's the one that we would love to have exist. And I think it's gonna be a very important story for the African and for those of African descent because it shows how um, we could have perhaps been, and we'll never know, but it could have been this. Yes. Yes. Could you tell us uh, what did you do to prepare yourself to, to, to this role in terms of physical exercise, in terms of reading? How did you create the character, your yeah. version of the character? Right, I mean, it was a lot of different things. Physically, of course, we were being trained from the very beginning. We only started shooting in January, uh, and we started training in early November. So the sort of the, the physical lexicon of the of the characters was being something was something we were being trained into very very uh, specifically. Um, and so that then of course I did my own um, <clears throat> personal training just to strengthen my own physique in my own way uh, at the same time. And um, you know it was also you know for me everything has to be like I play a, te a television character. Who uses a sword, and so for me, everything has to be, you know, what is this character's connection to their weapon? What, is, how do they find their flow in it? And um, my character on on this other TV show I'm in is very economical with it, whereas this character I found, you know, you have to find it through your body and through your imagination of her, and she just has more of a flourish with it. It's more, it is, it's more to the book actually, because she's she's a traditionalist. And so, like it was, it was something that was deep. It was on the page. Mr. Kugler talked to me about it the day he, I got the offer, and I sat down with him in, in April of last year. And 
it was really beautiful how he described who she was and um, and then it was deepening those things like well, she's a traditionalist and what exactly does that mean and how does that manifest on the page and how do we make sure that that is something that comes out and and you know various other things about her that I can't share I think uh, that you know will be massive spoilers but I think that you know there is something um, you know what I did was a lot of it is reading there are so many variations number one of this story um, in terms of you know we have Mr. Coates doing it now and before we had you know the very beginning we had Christopher Priest we've had so many different ways of telling the story and so becoming acquainted with those different ways and what out of that fed me and what didn't you know was something that I also pulled from I also wanted to learn more about women soldiers and so um, I mean there's such interesting examples I mean um, you know you know, we all know Gaddafi had this women, this mm -hmm. contingency of women soldiers, and that was kind of not quite what I was after, but <laughs> it was an interesting manifestation of African women um, right next to the head of state at all times, which is basically what the Dora are as well. Um, so it was a very interesting exploration of that, and of course, it's, you know, there's, there is something so interesting about how we were not going to make the Dora like how, say, Christopher Priest had them. You know, and there was that sort of issue of the Dora have been, you know, sort of, you know, there was something kind of sexist about how he, they were first portrayed and how they were kind of characterless in the beginning and, you know, how that's evolved. And, and of course, Mr. Coates has done an astounding job with that. And, <clears throat> you know, so it was, it was all about really synthesizing all those things and then finding who she is in the context of the story, which I can't talk he heavily about. But, so it's hard for me to go into how I created or I can't tell you the story plot. But um, yeah, a lot of it had to do with looking at, at the, the, the experience of military, the, the choice, the concept, and also a lot of the relevance, you know, the relevance of today, women in power today, and what they, um, what challenges they face and who they are and how they become who they are. But also learning the history of Wakanda was very important to me. Um, to me, like she's very commi she, her commitment to her country, and the, the what she carries on her shoulders, is so um, it's so tremendous. She you know she carries the security of this nation on her shoulders, and understanding that from my own perspective, um, and you know how the, this country this country of course does get into certain degrees of jeopardy in the story and. The idea, you know, I'm a, I'm a big women's, I'm an advocate for women and girls, and the idea of those little girls and women who, if this country goes into massive jeopardy, won't have the opportunities that she has, get exposed to the sort of things that Wakanda has been protected from, really connected me deeply to the stakes that she was feeling. Do you think that the story will, I mean, I know there's all type of uh, African griots and uh, African uh, real hero stories, and, is, and this story means probably a lot African Americans because of the concept of a, a hero and everything else. But do you think that in mainland Africa and expats, you think they would look at this story as importantly as people here do, as, you know, this representation, this fictional? Listen, I grew up on the continent, and uh, yeah, we're paying attention. We're paying attention to the lack of representation of ourselves. And it, 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 sometimes it's, it's even beyond. The, the reason why I think it's extremely special to the African is because we grew up looking at, you know, African Americans. We grew up looking at Denzel Washington and Michael Jackson. And, you know, we grew up seeing from, you know, an Oprah even, but we grew up looking at, at the African American as the most popular African representation. Our representation, our, our, our voice, our accents, our languages, not so popular. So this is extremely important to the African because this actually breaks that barrier which has never been done. That This is a precedent that has never been set before. And so absolutely, I'm, I'm already being hounded by Zimbabwean press about talking about this thing. Because yeah, it's huge for the African to see, and I grew up, want, like the reason why I started writing plays from the African female perspective was because the representation was so tremendously poor. So absolutely, I think that they're very, everyone, African Americans for, this, for various reasons that overlap, and Africans you know, are very, I think it's going to be a deeply, deeply important film for that type of representation. And I think the fact that we do use an African language in this film and we are pulling very, very specifically from beautiful aesthetics around the continent that could often be looked at as, you know, not like have often been considered primitive and words like that have been thrown at them, but we're celebrating them as something really beautiful and important. And I think that in and of itself, I mean, the African is going to be. Um, 
feel very affirmed by think, that this film. Last question, guys. I think. Do you think it will be political in a way? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that I can't go into, but uh, there's, a, there's a ton of profound relevancy in this film uh, to the world we are in right now. And I think it's kind of stunning because he didn't create it. Um, he, he wrote it before uh, some things were happening. But um, it just, that's what great art tends to do. It tends to be a forecaster. Um, you know, great artists tend to, they, they can tell what the weather's gonna be a ways away. And so that's exactly what Ryan is. So it really, it's astounding how it hits on so many issues. It hits on global issues. It hits on very domestic issues to the United States. It hits on black issues um, from, you know, the African and the African American perspective. It hits on so many things in ways that are very specific and character driven and I think will be deeply resonant. So I'm excited for it. Thanks, guys. Thank Have a good one. Thanks. She's going to grab the pita. The pita should be coming right now. So if you want to just leave the recorders here.